Hi there, I'm Tony Glynn and welcome to the PGG Rights and Stud Tour. This week we're coming to you from Silverdale and Oakdale Stud. Now this is a South Down Stud owned by the Gray family. We're just west of Palmerston North and I think that might be what he's coming right now on his J1 V8 Bedford. How you going, Waddy? Not bad, thanks. Good day, Brock. Yeah, it is, except for the old chair. Good to see you. Yeah, good yeah. to see you. We better go and have a look at some of these rams. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we better. Okay. South Downs were one of the first original sheep breeds in New Zealand, and the Gray family have been involved with the breed for nearly a century. Together with their two daughters, Wattie and Rhea Gray farm their Silverdale stud on the Manawatu Plains near Rongatia. The South Downs, Wattie? My mother started off in 1928, with a few years from Henson Brothers, Mount Stewart, and a direct line is about 5k from here and they built up from there and uh, when I was a kid going to school in the 40s I always took days off and go to ram fairs with Dad. So I've been tied up with South Downs all my life and as soon as I left school in 1950 I took over part of the flock. You talked of being surrounded in dairy farmers, you were milking cows here originally? We did have about 70 cows here originally but we had to build a new cow shed, so that's when we went out uh, towards the end of the 70s. And, uh, you hung, um, up, hung up your overalls? I never had one. <laughs> 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 never regretted it. Uh, South Downs have been in the fall for at least 20 years. Well, what, what are, you've been in the game longer than most. I'm not going to ask you how old you are, but have I you did, watched the, the South Downs evolve? Oh, in the 50s when Roland Perry had his sale and went out of uh, South Downs, he had a very good flock, but they were short and dumpy. They got blamed for overfat. A lot of the overfat come from uh, crossbred ewes, and as years went on, they stretched the South Downs out. Uh, with a South Down, you don't want it too long, otherwise you lose your early maturity. And uh, that's how the South Downs over the years have lengthened out and they're much bigger than they used to be. 900 breeders in New Zealand and within two years it was back to about roughly 90. And uh, I kept going, probably the best thing I ever did. You're a South Down man through and through. Whereabouts did the breed originate? Originated from England. And to my knowledge it was brought into New Zealand about 1840. And there wouldn't be too many breeds of sheep in 1840? There wouldn't be too many. There's, as time went on, it was just mainly South Downs and Romneys. So the family have been right behind you all the way there, was Yeah, you? all the way, and the two girls are fantastic. Uh, they've got their own stud, which was started in 1992, and uh, they uh, hopefully will carry it on. Janet Gray, here on the family farm, you've been back and forwards a few times? Yes, I have. I um, spent all my growing up here um, with the family and with um, my older sister Diane. So I grew up running around as a kid outside and helping Dad when I was younger. Um, pet lambs, going to shows with Dad, etc. Yeah. So I really enjoyed it and just sort of help out in between whenever I can. So I was here up until um, when I started Polytech schooling Polytech and then sort of moved away for a few years down to Wellington and moved back so I got into the hospitality industry. So I try and get up here when I can and help them out every so often with a few things around the farm and be involved as much as I can. You're yes. a, a chef in Wellington. Whereabouts in Wellington? Yes I am. I'm, I'm the head chef at a gastro pub called the Tasting Room uh, in central Wellington. So it, Involves a lot of meat, a lot of meat. We do a lot of beef and lamb, also a lot of um, game. Got a little bit involved in that and some of the wild sort of foods a wee bit. And so I've been in the industry a wee while, but been based down there for a couple of years uh, at the tasting room. Um, and it's quite good to sort of work the two, like the farming sort of side of things and my knowledge with meat um, and knowledge about the product, which can help, like, uh, for me training um, younger staff coming through and about talking to my suppliers. I've got a wee bit more of an idea about 
um, seasons, product and, and cuts and what to do with it. Uh, sourcing the lamb for the restaurant must be hard, 365 days a year. It is. Um, that's sort of one thing maybe I sort of struggle with of, of seasons and product and consistent product throughout a, a lot of um, the meat we get um, throughout New Zealand, like there are now a few more specifics, like I think Merino and Texo have sort of got into that and marketing their meat and so they're coming through and are doing quite well. Um, but maybe like, you know, having it more seasonal, just like you have oysters and white bait and have it like quite concentrated would be something to look at. Um, otherwise you do get lamb available all through the year, which, and sometimes it's, it's not fresh, it's usually frozen. Um, and it's a real shame because we've got great product out there on any meat, on any meat breed um, and available to customers. So it's about, you know, keeping it fresh um, but also if it is lamb, having it as lamb and if it's hog it, hog it and educating people about how to use it properly. Yeah. So the, some of the cuts and, and the different ages I think is quite good. And it's just knowledge and it's the same like with cattle, uh, with, the, with beef and how that sort of worked. It's just sort of doing it the same with, with lamb. Yeah. I think it's really important because we've got great, great breeds and we've got great availability of fine products. So it's a real shame sometimes where consistency can vary throughout that season or throughout the year and you know that it's not quite right. You like, the, you like those meaty hindquarters, don't you? Oh, meaty hindquarters, and if you've never eaten South Down meat, you want to try it because you'll never eat nothing else afterwards. Yeah. yeah. Right, well in the South Down you've got to have a good hindquarter, good through the loin, and uh, this one is particularly good in the shoulder. The other two are slightly heavier in the shoulder, which for a South Down is not too bad. And uh, they're mated with uh, leaner type of sheep. This one's mated with more thicker type. And uh, so far, the three of them have been very well. What are the commercial guys looking for a terminal sire? There's a lot to choose from out there, isn't there? There is. There's a terrific amount of different breeds out there. With South Downs, so early maturity, easy lambing, and you can't beat it for early maturity. Uh, drafting lambs at 10 weeks old at 18 and a half K, the other breeds come in afterwards. I never run a breed down, they've all got their place. A lot of country seek different breeds better than others. Mike, well, whereabouts are you from, Mike? Oh, I farm at Waituna West, about 25 minutes north of Fielding. Yep. It's sort of a bit of rolling hill country and some steeper hills sort of in the middle of the farm. Yep. What are you running there, Mike? Uh, I'm running about 2,500 ewes, give or take, and 100, 120 odd cows. Yep. Romneys? Yeah, Romney ewes, Romney base, use Romney rams across most of the ewes and keep the replacements, so. Yeah. So for a terminal you've been using the South Downs for a few years now from Silverdale? Yeah I've been buying the South Downs here for probably six or eight years now and yeah I keep coming back every year because they're really good sheep. Yeah now what, yeah. Are you, what, what are you noticing? Oh just noticing that I put the South Downs across my B, B mob I use and as a terminal behind the Romney Rams and you know 60 to 80 percent of the first couple of drafts that I kill would be all the South Down lambs yeah. and getting through to about now sort of mid-February I've got very few South Down lambs left. So you, you're getting them away fairly early. When do you wean? Oh, I wean uh, sort of the mid mid December. So the, la the lambs would be 11 weeks old, sort yeah. of from the start of lambing. Yeah. So you know they're still relatively young, you know, yeah. for, for their weight. So everything's going straight over the scales at, at weaning, Mike, and, and you're getting a yep. few away off off the mum. Yeah. Well, you know, the South Down lambs sort of at weaning weigh, weigh all the top lambs, and the South Down lambs first draft off mum would be killing out 17 and a half to 18 and a half kilos. Yeah. Sort of year on year out. So. It's, yeah, it's good. Yeah, and you see the South Down lambs come onto the scales, and and sometimes you think they're they're not the biggest lambs, but you're always surprised by their live weight because yeah. they're just chocker full of meat. You know, it's yeah, it's good. You, you won't you'll be using them for a while. Oh, yep. Yeah, I won't be changing. I've yeah. used other terminal breeds in the past, but the South Downs just stack up. Yeah, that much better than a lot of the others. So, as far as I'm concerned, in, in my operation. What are you, you've helped a lot of people over the years and, and you like to see younger people coming through and help them out? And oh yes, I've helped quite a few people uh, start new flocks and I've helped them with rams. Quite often I've lent them a ram to get them started and uh, even if he's a bit older ram, he's getting the best because these young people want a ram for stud sheep 
they can't afford too much and if they buy a cheap ream, well they're better without it in my opinion and it's better to let them have an old ream that produce top, top uh, progeny yeah. and I don't mind helping anybody that's uh, willing to do it yeah. and uh, it gets them started. What are you were talking earlier on about um, partnerships with the Rams? How does that work, Waddy? As far as I'm concerned, it's always worked very well with us. Uh, every time I want a Ram, everybody wants it, and they go sky high. And uh, two or three go in partners, and uh, we've we've had no problems whatsoever over several different breeders being in partnership over the years. Uh, it enables you to buy the top rams without the top price, so to speak. What do you put Yes, here? the other two. This one's by Clifton Down 210, uh, bred by Chris Medley-Cotter at Rymati. He's very good sheep. He's uh, slightly thicker in the shoulder, but I made him to uh, finer shoulder sheep. He's very good. He all breeds at several different shows. And he's very good in the back end, and he's breeding exceptionally well. He's, uh, for a homebred sheep, he's, uh, in my opinion, he's pretty good sheep. How so old is he? Uh, what he? Uh, these are both six tooths. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I've got rams by them now. Yeah. I've had one or two uh, rams I've bred over the years. You get a patch time when you show them and they win the all breeds and perhaps a Suffolk judge is doing the all breeds when they get to the south down they can't uh, they go back to meet at the Suffolk and the south down is bigger than the uh, Suffolk they can't get over it that's in more recent years and uh, I've had two or three of these dreams and home breed and they've done exceptionally well over the years. Waddy's results have not only come from years of breeding from quality bloodlines, but from putting his South Downs to the test in the all breed competitions at eight AMP shows annually for the past 40 years. Diane Gray, no sons in the family, you get to help on the farm quite a bit. I sure do, yes, uh, grew up on parents' farm and um, as a, as a child growing up, you know, we were take, taken to shows and, well, dad, dad, dad showed sheep and many shows. You get to a stage where you're actually sick of them as a child. Yeah. Um, show after show, eight, eight shows a year and um, or over a summer period. So it's sort of been, I suppose, the, the farming's in the blood, really, and, and um, yeah, sort of ingrained there and we've just kept going and I, I help out where I can on the farm. Yeah, you've had to sort of take over a few times and do the lambing. Yeah, I have. They, um, we can get pretty harsh weather in the Manawa too, in the, in, in sort of from July, August, September. And even October can be pretty bad. Um, so with lambing, what we usually do is have about, on some nights, about 60 ewes. We house them in, in the wool in the shed um, on, the, on the coldest nights. And we have, we save, it, save an awful lot of lambs through that. Um, and what we do, we turn them out the next day. Um, some some lamb in the paddock and you bring them in straight away. It just depends yeah. on the weather. With the you know the easterly once the southerly and easterly hit here, yeah. the lambs you know can't you know sometimes don't survive very long at all. So with housing most of them, um, the lambing percentage is right up there, which is great, well over 100 percent. So Diane, a lot of people may think you're lambing inside that they can't be a very hardy breed. Uh, the purebred Southdown is born with very very. Sh very very fine short short wool so yeah. they have no hardly any wool covering on them when they're born um, so when you're crossing a south down with the other breeds we have in New Zealand it actually makes them more hardy yeah um, and that that helps them withstand the weather conditions right around the country yeah so what we do we, we, we do use wool over lamb covers um, just made out of pure wool um, put those on the lambs as soon yeah. as they're born Basically, or and the lambs are warm as warm as anything in those. How long do you leave those on for, Diane? Um, well, sometimes we leave them on till docking because they actually they stretch as the lamb grows. For for those so, in the South Island that'll be tailing. Oh, ab ab yeah. Well, it would be, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it depends. It just 
totally depends. I mean, some lambs only have them on a short time. Yeah. But um, they're marvellous. Save lots of lives with, with using those. They're really great. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So, Diane, it's been quite a busy life here for the whole family with the studs and showing. And... Yeah, it has. A, you know, my parents have been farming all their life um, and worked hard all their life. And in and, and the early days where Dad was dairy farming as well, as having stud sheep and... Uh, they used to milk the cows and trottle off to the A&P shows, eight or nine in a season, and um, when they come home they'd have to turn around and milk the cows again. So it was awful long days for them. And mum supported dad right through through all of that. Um, and it's only latterly in the last few years she hasn't been able to go to the A&P shows because of her health. And so, and she used to work outside and in and, and all, all aspects. And when we had the shearers here and picking up wool and you know, and meals for sharers, and so yeah, the whole, she, mum's been involved, you know, right from the start, and and I think she'd be out there now if she could. She'd know as much as anyone on the genetic side of things. I think she would. Yeah. You're also uh, dabbling in a wee bit of judging with the with the sheep? Yes, I've been asked, um, a couple of years ago I helped out at the Carterton A&P show, two, maybe three years ago, so I did that just on a lighter scale, um, Dad sort of helped me with that. And then just recently, last year in the Royal Show in Hamilton, I assisted Blair Robinson, our president of the New Zealand Society, um, just to sort of get a little bit more experience on sort of the larger shows, see what's a bit more involved, um, sort of work with him a bit and um, get his brain working and asking him a lot of questions too about things to work on or other things to look for, look for in sheep and, and showing yeah. um, and judging. And he gives a different point of view because I've, you know, Dad's quite traditional and sort of growing up in that um, all the years, it's a different way. And now there's so much technology and farmers are after different different things and different scanning and, and weights. So there's, I'm in between of like both the eye and measurement. So it was interesting asking Blair quite a few things and getting some tips from him. So it was pretty good and learnt a lot. Yeah. So it was interesting and in, uh, dealing with some of the other breeders throughout New, New Zealand and even some of the South Island breeders. Would, so you, really... be, would you be quite keen to take the stud on if... If you had the opportunity later? Yeah, I mean, at the moment, like with my work commitments in Wellington, it's, it's fine and it's handy enough, a couple of hours drive and I can be up here, but maybe eventually try to work something between the two with hospitality and farming and that sort of side, or, you know, help out here or whatever happens, you know, down the track. But yeah, I mean, it'd be a shame with whatever happens to let it go after the generations that have been involved with Dad's parents and Dad taking it on all his life. Um, and then just to sort of sell, so you want to sort of keep it going because there's yeah. a lot of history and a, a lot of uh, longevity in, in there and the, the breed here, that, um, the South Downs and the Silverdale and Oakdale have got like a good, good rapport and a good uh, knowledge throughout New Zealand so, and it's just in the knowledge that's sort of been gained, you don't really want to let that go no. so it would be quite something to look forward to or something to maybe think about yeah. later on, yeah definitely Performance is most important to Janet, Diane and Watty in the show ring, but more importantly, that performance correlates to the sale yards. Sam Wright, you're with PGG Wrightsons based out of Fielding. Fairly busy time of the year for you, Sam. Yeah, it has been, yeah. Uh, through January was was pretty busy, yeah, with all the U, the U fairs we had on. We had a couple of, uh, a big U fair, we had uh, 18,000 in there, and, uh, and then we've just had a supplementary U fair uh, a couple of weeks ago, and we had another big yarding in there. It's a big yarding, eighteen thousand. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Nah, coming from uh, stock coming from sort of everywhere from Masterton right the way up to sort of Radahi and and across to uh, to Dannyburg. So yeah, pretty pretty wide space there, uh, and also Wanganui. Yeah, yeah. And the prices still holding up there with the use? They are. Yep. Yeah. Nah, prices are very high. Yep. Um, some record prices around and, uh, and fielding's been not far behind, yeah. So yeah. We, we've been pretty much up there. Now you just spoke of the U fairs up here, how about the, the, on the ram side of it? Yeah, no, we have. We've had a couple of, of uh, ram fairs in fielding, one uh, prior to Christmas um, with 27 South Downs uh, up for sale, 17 yeah. sold in, uh, in an average of 2,000. So, um, so they're, they're pretty, uh, pretty sought after the, the South Down rams. Sam, you've been bringing a few clients here for a few years, sourcing rams from Silverdale. Yep, yeah, no, I've bring it for the last couple of years now. I've been bringing clients here, and, uh, and they're always pretty happy with, with the rams they get out of Waddy's. They're always up to a high standard. And, yep. yep, yep, going out to some fairly big places. Yeah, they are, yep, yep, you know, going out to fairly, you know, some of the rougher country, and the, and the rams always seem to uh, 
they seem to hold up and, and do the job well, yeah. Yeah. Now, a lot of those places you'll be going back there for weaning, you'll be seeing these lambs? Yep, yep. Um, getting a lot of these lambs away pretty uh, pretty early. Yeah. Um, weaning weights are, uh, are fairly high compared yeah. to some other breeds. Uh, yeah, in, in, in uh, sort of mid-November, you know, um, yeah. early November, getting some lambs away, so it's fairly early for, yeah. for, uh, for weaning. So just like these good weights with the in early maturing. Yeah, early maturing. Yep, and then full of meat, you know. Um, yeah. And yield well. Yeah. Um, all the lambs they yield really well. Guy Haynes, you're a vet technician up here in the Manawatu. Yes. Who, who are you with, Guy? Uh, I'm with Totally Vets Limited, um, based in Fielding, and we also have a branch in Palmerston North. Okay. And you're you're just large animals. My oh, my speciality was large animals. Yeah. Fairly wet sort of place, is it? Uh, it can be, it has its moments. Yeah. yeah, it can be very wet during the winter, but um, the summer especially has been especially kind to us. Yeah. 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 So, something fairly important there, Guy, the brucellosis testing on the property here. Yeah. Um, what he's uh, got a brucellosis accredited free uh, flock here, which is uh, very, very important. And he has a stringent policy of any of the rams pre sold uh, or brucellosis tested and palpated prior to sale. Any of the rams that may be lent to people, and what he's lends a few the here and oh, on the lending program here and here, they are all tested prior to going, and also as soon as they return, uh, he'll give us a call and we'll come back and we'll bleed them, yep. and uh, they'll be isolated until the test results come back. Yeah. So it is a very very stringent policy that he adopts here. How far afield are the commercial guys coming to, to buy your rams, Wally? All over the North Island from. Uh, Top of the North Island, Brisbane, Wairau, Taranaki, Wellington, Master, uh, Wairapa, everywhere. Not many locally because uh, we're surrounded by dairy farms. Busy time of year when you're selling the rams, is it Wadi? It is, it sort of starts end of November, early December. Most of the tutus are sold before Christmas. Some of them are still here in January, February, because they're later mating, and they, they all go in there. I've never really uh, had enough to supply the full orders over the years, and it's the quality of meat that I've got, but it's a thing back to you, So if anyone looking for that meaty breed, breed. Get, get those lambs away early. Yeah, you get the lambs away early, early, and you can't beat them, in my opinion. Yeah. Thanks, Wally. For more information on the PGG Rights and Stud Tour, visit ruraltv.co.nz.